contribute with uh, at this conference is uh, design to robotic production for circular approaches in architecture. Uh, and it was conducted as part of a workshop uh, within the robotic lab at uh, team of uh, Kay Delft, uh, the Faculty of Architecture, under the guidance of Professor Dr. Henriette Beer uh, and research assistant Max Latour, together with a team of three master students. The presented research is focused on an uh, innovative creation of a robotic production workflow. Uh, the context that we chose uh, is a search for efficient material use and robotic manufacturing tools with the goal of achieving a closed loop system. This involves um, the main focus, which uh, consists in the robotic beam manufacturing, as well as complementary processes, which uh, we will shortly mention. The architectural application is inspired by a project developed by researcher Max Latour for his graduation uh, thesis involving topological optimization for a supportive beam structure. This project represents a guide to our current research, in particular sharing the computational design strategy. Here in the video, uh, you can see the creation of the beam as well as um, the um, node that was um, created to support it. So to understand how the system would work at a mesoscale, um, I would like to refer to this uh, most recent experiment with additive uh, manufacturing. Uh, this involves 3D printing of steel nodes connecting the beams uh, in order to assure, ensure the structural stability between the beams. So in the images, uh, you can visualize the design as well as um, additive manufacturing of the steel node. The scope of our presentation today is focused on the design, toolpath preparation, and robotic production of the wooden beam elements, which would be joined by this uh, 3D printed node. So here we see the three stages of the uh, subtractive robotic milling procedure that uh, we will further elaborate on uh, in our research. So we begin by doing a study of a series of architectural cross sections. These cross-sections are developed based on uh, certain functional requirements and uh, to create specific spatial experiences, such as indoor cycling and walking paths. So these cross-sections are then put together to design a base morphology, which is then analyzed using structural analysis tools such as Karamba in Grasshopper within uh, the Rhino software. So our first step is to structurally ana uh, analyze the base uh, morphology and determine where there is maximum load utilization. The second step is to identify the tension and the compression lines and generate these load paths. The third step is to combine the result of the utilization of uh, the geometry and the identification of the tension and compression lines and use this as an input for uh, deciding to group the tension and compression curves. This curve bundling is done for material optimization and to determine the thickness of the beams that will be generated. So to have a quick overview of uh, the generation of the beams, we initially uh, developed the base morphology using the architectural cross sections in Rhino. Then we use Grasshopper and Karamba to develop the beams using structural analysis on the base morphology. We further then rationalize all the beams and uh, select a small fragment from them to focus for the next part of our research. Well, so in terms of uh, the manufacturing of the beam, um, we uh, have actually utilized wood that was obtained as a byproduct from industrial processes. So basically uh, we recycled planks of wood um, the stacking of the wood, so basically putting all these pieces together, follows a computational strategy, um, which enables an optimal uh, utilization of wood, uh, such that each piece of wood is as efficiently used as possible. Um, the packing process also helps to reduce material waste um, by minimizing the amount of wood that would need to be milled from, uh, from each piece. Uh, these planks are priorly sorted from the uh, stack based on their thickness, packed according to the strategy mentioned before, and glued together. Um, the glued pack is then stabilized on a platform and placed on the milling bed. Uh, this, the, this milling process consists of two main steps. So uh, the first one uh, is a, a coarse material removal realized by milling uh, by the milling head running transversely, as you can see in the left uh, uh, part uh, by the patterns left on the wood. 
so running transversely to the length of the beam. Uh, the second step, which represents the fine material removal, is realized by milling the wood longitudin longitudinally uh, in uh, direction with respect to the beam. The computational two, two paths for milling uh, for the milling process have been fully developed uh, in Grasshopper uh, for Rhino. Uh, the G code to be implemented by the robotic arm was created uh, within the uh, QCA uh, PRC plugin, but the two paths um, uh, I created as a series of continuous uh, polylines uh, just using simple uh, geometric uh, components uh, within Grasshopper. Due to the complexity of the two paths uh, relative to the robotic arm movement, the two halves of the beam uh, are milled one after the other. Um, a visualization of the milling process um, is in progress. You can see it in this video. Uh, in this case, exploring a more faceted uh, beam design. Uh, this shows the first step of the milling process, which is the coarse material removal. So this runs, as you can see, transversely to the um, length of the beam. After finishing with milling the first half, um, as discussed, so the beam is uh, milled in two steps, uh, one first half and then the other part. Um, the beam is turned, uh, it is reoriented, and the second half is milled according to the corresponding tool paths. Uh, as it can be noticed, the choice of a lo longitudinal final milling path results in a smooth final surface. Uh, sawdust uh, results as a byproduct of the milling process, which following the same circular uh, principle is utilized to 3D print with. So here you can see the biocyber physical planetoid, which is also an example of 3D printing using wood and uh, bioplastics as a composite material. This was done as a part of a research within the robotic building lab. And uh, this is a design prototype that is uh, meant to exist uh, in symbiosis with the nature and biodegrade over time. So this is a um, precedent of what we can do with the byproducts generated from the, uh, wooden mill the wood milling process. So what we take away from this project is uh, developing a closed loop system using subtractive robotic milling procedures to uh, minimize material wastage. Uh, also, in order to achieve these complex geometries, uh, we have to come up with material efficient packing uh, strategies that have a circular approach such that these wooden planks are um, used in a most efficient manner with minimum uh, material being removed during the milling process. And, um, for this project, we would like to thank uh, the input from all the researchers at TU Delft and uh, Applied uh, and Amsterdam University of Applied Sciences, and also the Dutch Research Co Council, which was uh, responsible for funding the project, and various industry partners that supported us during the execution of the research. And with this, we would like to thank you all for listening to us. And if you have any questions, please let us know.